Hey guys, uh, Keith here. All right, so um, after a bit of a cautioning video the other week about how you set up your um, controllers and some changes that are coming up, I thought um, we're far enough into the development cycle of this change that um, it's probably ready to um, give you a bit of a preview of what's coming. I'm not going to put a timeline on it yet. Um, this is a big change and it comes with a fairly significant amount of uh, implementation risk that we might have broken something. And it's also going to be a bit of a one-way transition. Once you move to this new version, you're not going to be able to move back. And so we are going to want to make sure that it's nice and stable first. And we may even put out a kind of beta test version for those that want to try it out and are comfortable understanding how to manage their configuration and, and recover if things go wrong for them. Um, so th this is my current setup, but it's not a very clean setup. It breaks a lot of the rules. Um, I have some very small DDP controllers up here. These literally are four channels. These are actually uh, Arduinos. Um, and so they're very, very, very low end. And DDP, of course, is a very lightweight protocol. And so it's ideally suited for them. Um, I then have a beagle bone here, which covers all of these channels. Um, the challenge with this is I've, I've, my universes are an absolute basket case. Uh, they're all over the place. Um, uh, although they are in order, they're not contiguous. Um, the sizes are all over the place. That in itself is not a problem, but yeah, it's very, very messy. And then down the bottom here, I've got some universes which are very neatly done, where I've allocated blocks of contiguous universes. I've put them on a single line, and this is definitely the way we would prefer to see people set up their controllers. So with the new release, and I'll show you, um, this is the, the current beta version. Uh, the setup tab, I've now labeled it the controllers tab, looks quite different. Um, and the reason for that is, is because these really are meant to be controllers rather than universes, etc. And so the concept is that you would have a single line item for each controller. Um, now, where you've got things messy like I did, you'll see they all convert across in this unmanaged state, um, which means that it still does come across. It still will work, um, but you will find there's some limited functionality when you, you get yourself into this unmanaged state. The key thing being, is there's we know visualizer and no control or upload um, now this is an actually a loss of functionality you would have had um, at least uh, you would have had this in the past but going forward unless you define your universes in contiguous blocks this functionality is going away um, so you'll either have to stay on an old release or you'll have to start to look at how you manage your universes and start to clean them up um, the concept here, I mean, it's not enormously different. You know, each line item is a separate thing. You now have properties over here, so there's no more popping up dialog boxes and editing things, etc. There really are just three types of outputs here. There's a USB output that you would use for any controllers where you're attaching something via a serial port on your computer. Um, you'd use that. Uh, Ethernet's used for all of the network protocols, whether it's DDP or E131 or ArtNet or ZCPP, etc. You would add that as an Ethernet um, output, and the null's still here as well. Um, and that's it. Everything else is then hidden under those types of controller types. Um, when you click on, on these, you, you do get, oh sorry, when you click away, so if you hit the escape key or you click on the header here, you go back to some global properties. Um, these things are still available in the, uh, the preferences uh, menu, but I did want to show them here as well. So things like controller synchronization, uh, forcing your local IP, and there's now also a global FPP proxy. So if you've got a configuration where you've got your home network, Wi-Fi connected to an FPP, which is your show player and it's the proxy into your show network you can now just set that once here and all the controllers will inherit that as an FPP proxy um, if you want to have different FPP proxies for each controller you then can go and set those at the individual controller levels but this lets you set it once and have it apply across all of your um, uh, controllers 
Um, then within each one of these, you then have a set of properties. And these vary depending on the particular type of protocol here. Um, generally speaking, everything has a name. The name must be unique. By default, when we run the conversion, it's going to bring across the description field of the first universe or the first entry for that controller. Um, but you should change that to be a relatively short but unique name for that controller. You can put your longer description into the description field here. Um, IDs exist for only a handful of types, DDP, which doesn't have universes, etc. You can set an ID um, and then you can use hash and that ID followed by a start channel to use the, um, the universe start channel format as a way to address into the controller. Uh, auto size is still supported on D DDP. Uh, active just sort of turns it on or off. Um, you'll now also have this vendor field and this vendor field applies across all of them. Um, unlike previously, we'd get this humongous list of controllers. You now actually do get a list of vendors. And so you can come in here and say, yeah, this is a Falcon controller. Then the model field appears. You can come in here and say, there, yeah, that's an F16 V3. And now it said, well, hang on a second. The F16 V3 doesn't support DDP. So it flags the protocol in red. So maybe instead I'll come back and I'll say, no, actually, I, I was wrong. This is an FPP lead panel which does support DDP, and so it stays in red. Uh, for the version field, this is generally blank. Some of the SAN devices, there's slightly different uploads for the different firmware versions, and so you might need to fill that in for the SAN devices. Um, suppressing duplicate frames, IP address, all the usual. This can be an IP address or a... Um, uh, uh, a name um, which uh, resolves on your network. Um, the protocols here, now changing protocols is literally as simple between network protocols, this is literally as simple as clicking on one of these and it will convert it into whatever is necessary to make that work. Um, this is where you'd put in an FPP proxy if you wanted something for specifically this controller. Um, like I said, if you've got a generic proxy, I suggest you set it at a higher thing. Then you can set the number of channels and, and other properties. Oh, sorry, channels per packet and channels. Um, it's interesting that that's, oh yeah, I, I think I've set it that way. Normally that would be 14440. Anyway, sorry, 1440. Anyway, so yeah, that's a DDP. Uh, E131, if I go to a one that's managed, um, comes down here again, you need a name and description and everything. Um, here it is a Falcon F16 V3, but because it's the 131, it's okay. Um, if you want to make it multicast, there's a checkbox that you can check here. Um, there's a priority field on E131 because it does support priority. Um, and then you say the start universe and the number of universes, and then you get this read only field here that shows you which universes that actually means. Um, now these are all 500 12 channels but if I wanted it to be different sizes I can click on the individual sizes checkbox and then I can open this up and I can come in and say well that universe is only 123 channels so you still have control over the individual universe sizes the only issue is is your universes must be in a contiguous block they start at a number and then it includes 45 contiguous universes um, but other than that, it, it's not a hell of a lot different than it has been before. And in some ways, it's more flexible because previously, if you wanted to do this, you would have to create these as, uh, the, with different sizes. You'd have to create them on separate lines. Now, with these unmanaged ones that have come in, um, you'll see that it, it's joined 31 and 2 together because 31 and 2 are contiguous. Um, in these cases, they came across with different sizes, so that's all converted across um, correctly. So all pretty straightforward. If you want to add a USB, um, it's smart enough to realize that COM3 is my only COM port. So it's gone and picked that COM port. It's defaulted it to DMX. You can, of course, change it to you know, Lightarama or Renard or any of the other protocols here. Uh, there is also the Law Optimized is now included in this one. And you would come down here to devices and you'd say, oh, I have two devices. And now you get an AC controller and you can come in and say, oh, no, that's actually a Pixie 4, and maybe this one's, um, I don't know, maybe this is your AC controller, etc. And you can set the number of channels and all of that sort of stuff here, uh, just like you uh, would have been able to do with the Law Advanced. Now, I've still got Gil looking over this to make sure that it's all correct, but, but that's basically where that's going. 
Um, discovery is still there. I won't run that. Uh, the visualize, uh, you know, if you've got these contiguous blocks, you can still use the visualize. That will still come up and you'll still be able to visualize uh, your controller and the uploads uh, still work. Uh, there is this new feature here when um, these controllers uh, come on, it will actually, once you click on a controller, um, it actually keeps track of the ping state. And so when you go back to that controller, it then remembers whether it managed to reach that controller. So if I add another ethernet controller in here, give it 192.168.0.1, which is my router. Um, click away from it and come back to it. You'll see it's now got a green um, a radio button here, which says that that controller is actually online. So it's managed to ping it. And so it's available. So that's all there. Please don't get put off by the green background. For those that aren't familiar, this is my debug build. My debug builds are always have a green background because it, it lets me know when I'm looking at my debug version versus my production version. It just stops me getting confused. So don't be put, be put off by that at all. So yeah, that that's it. It has it had, it does have some flow on impacts. Uh, flow on impacts are things like now in the test tab. Uh, on the outputs here, these things are now organized within controllers. So you can now say, just turn that, uh, uh, you'll be able to turn a particular controller on rather than, um, oh. Okay. Not sure why that's not selecting, but doesn't matter. All right, so yeah, you can do that sort of stuff. Um, it also changes a little bit um, uh, things on the layout, so it runs a little bit slowly because it's a debug build. Um, so now when you come up to here and see the tooltips um, on a controller, things are slightly different. It now has um, the type of control, the name of the controller, etc. So a few little different attributes in here. Um, in the start channel world, uh, the old start channel format, which was output number and start channel has gone away. There is no such thing as that as a, a start channel format anymore. Um, and in fact, if you look at, um, if you look at these, these used to be in up output start channel format and it's changed them to be controller name start channel format now so uh, it'll automatically convert anything that's up output start channel to one of the supported start channel formats so I'm hoping that won't cause any impacts although it is one of the things I'm a little bit worried about as we go through um, the build process so um, along the way you'll see some of the features have become a little bit more consistently implemented so things like for instance uh, our serial ports here you can now um, uh, they're now uh, able to be actually not that one because I changed it to law optimized uh, if I change it back to DMX, uh, you can now make DMX auto-sized, and so it will basically vary the number of channels based on the number of models that happen to be allocated to it. Um, so a few things like that, which uh, are now going to be a little bit more consistently implemented across the various output types. So a bit of a change, a bit of a high risk. Um, we will try to uh, introduce this in a way that's lower impact. Uh, I will tell you that if you are a person like me who has a fairly messy um, structure in your current layout, you may want to start thinking about how do I clean that up right now before I do the conversion. Uh, you'll definitely have less issues if you've moved to a fairly clean um, uh, structure here than if you haven't. You'll have all these unmanaged things. Now, if I was to, uh, while, I, while I'm on it, if I, if I was to add another one in here, and let's say I was to duplicate the 201, uh, so if I was to go to 192.168. Uh, 1.201, which is an IP address I've already got, you'll notice that it's automatically flicked it over to unmanaged because at this point, obviously, it no longer um, supports it. And you'll notice that there is no visualize and upload. Whereas if I come in here and delete this one 
um, and I come back to here, um, although it hasn't updated the title yet, I'll have to go back and look at that. Um, it has now allowed the upload, etc., and that's because it's now actually back in the manage state. Um, uh, I'm just not sure why it didn't flick over automatically. It should have done, but we can fix that. All right, guys, um, I hope that's interesting. Um, uh, no doubt there'll be questions. Feel free to uh, to post your questions down below. Um, and look, if you like the video, please subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications uh, so that you can get updates on things like this because I don't always post everything to Facebook. And so subscribing on YouTube is a good way to make sure you get told when things get posted. Cheers, guys.